it's amazing the amount of materials that you can research right here. Fondren librarians are wonderful at uh, getting there first when new digital uh, resources become available. I can't imagine how many hours of labor uh, have been saved when we're doing our source checking and our confirmation. As an integral part of Rice University's research and sponsorship profile, Fondren is ever-growing and expanding. When I was a student here, the library was uh, less than half the size it is now, just in terms of physical space. We get over 50,000 volumes um, each year. I should say that one of the great advantages of the Rice Library is we have what's called open stacks. Search in the stacks, and that's always fun because you stumble onto a book next to the one you're looking for. There's still a lot of value um, going to the stacks. A lot of large libraries, you simply go and some library person goes and fetches the book. By having someone bring the book to you, you don't get to sort of look at the books around that book. The great advantage of a library like this is sometimes some of the most uh, exciting uh, discoveries are found almost accidentally. You look at other books next to the book you picked out. The, the ability to have open stacks is a huge advantage to undergraduates and graduates. Yes, the open stacks are helpful and you find things on your own and that's terrific. Yes, the library has, in its reorganizations, been much more conscientious about helping readers find their way on their own. But the third thing is the information staff, the circulation staff, they're so very Please good. Please come and talk to us. We would love to tell you all that we can tell you. Perhaps make an appointment, uh, come to talk out uh, you know, a research problem or, or question, something that they're working on. It's my job to keep up with what are the new databases, how do you access them, how do you use them. They're very helpful in helping me to figure out how I could have accessed this. And I've had some really amazing problems in the last year. Uh, recently uh, introduced using chat um, in a reference context. We love information and we love organizing it, but we also love finding it. And, you know, we've had, that's what we've done for most of our lives. And so we really, I think, in, in many cases, can be helpful. I got a request yesterday from a faculty member. They sent a citation. Researching it, I realized that the thing had not been published. And it was very recent. And what I found is that authors really love to be contacted. So I tracked the author down and sent him an email. Got back to me right away. I pointed out that actually it had been published as a book chapter in a book that he had, had published. And then the faculty member realized, well, you know, I really think we need to have this book, or he needed to have it, and so I talked with the head of reference, and she said, well, yeah, we should get this for the collection. And so, in that respect, the original request turned into a realization that there was this book we didn't have that we needed, not just for the faculty member, but for the collection. Working at the reference desk, you think of just helping people find what they need. I think it's important to note though that, you know, the role of the reference librarians goes, you know, much beyond that. A lot of what we do is done away from the desk. Library research classes, um, the reference librarians all have subject um, areas that they uh, specialize in. In different fields, their basic sources became digitized earlier than, earlier than other fields and particularly some sciences where uh, the most recent research is what you need. Because in science, the notion is more that you want immediate use. I think it's sometimes surprised when they actually need old books and old journals. I did a, a, an analysis one time. I went in different sections of the library where engineering books were housed and where science books were housed. And I was surprised how often they'd been checked out and how recently they'd been checked out. And that simply proved to me that even in the sciences, it's simply not true that people only use the most recent stuff that's all online. You want to know what the basic foundations of the field are that you're moving into. And gosh, here at Rice, I mean, what nanotechnology has built uh, up as a uh, 
uh, a frontier of disciplines across engineering and science and mathematics and even in social sciences and medical practices uh, is huge and people will go to a library to find out what the basic research is. And to really accentuate and promote that so that they can be aware of these resources and then be able to make a, 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 an educated decision on how they're going to best utilize the resources as the, as, as the resources evolve. Almost any person who's used a Ross Library would say that one of the great strengths of the library is the quality of the staff. They, they go out of their way to be helpful. And they, and they in essence, they, they know that a library exists in order to facilitate the research and the learning of students and the faculty. They need to hear from users about what will be valuable to have in the collection that we don't have. Now that we have huge choices for researchers and students about whether we take the electronic or the paper text of a journal and how long we keep things. They need the users to come, to come in and let them know what's going to help them you know, produce their work because there's a real ethos of service here.